You want an affordable yet good sounding streamer? At about 215 euros the Allo Boss 2 player is certainly affordable. But what about the sound quality? Like most Allo products the Boss 2 player is Raspberry Pi based. In this case a Type 4B 2 GB. The player version is the ready to use version of the Boss 2 DAC board and the configuration I review here has the aluminium housing and includes a 16 GB micro SD card holding the software of your choice and the Allo Nirvana low noise switch mode power supply. I ordered Mood as player software and also tried Allo's top power supply. The Boss player is connected to a line input on an amplifier over a set of RCA cables. You could use the CD input or for instance AUX or tuner. It needs to be connected to your home network too using the so called UTP network cable. If you want to use Wi-Fi instead it is advised to use an external Wi-Fi dongle which will set you back 18 euros. If you have a computer or NAS in your network that contains music that can be played by the Boss player too. You have to share the volume holding the music to the network and point the Boss 2 player to it. An infrared remote control is included and offers volume control, menu settings and mute. You can also use a smartphone, tablet or computer as remote control, on which you choose the music to play. As said, I chose the ready built version that has a blue anodized top and sides and silver front, back and bottom. It measures 115 by 97 by 64 mm and weighs 379 grams. On the front we see the infrared eye, the small OLED display, the micro SD slot of the Raspberry Pi that holds the player's software and a joystick that lets you set volume by moving it up and down and the menus by moving left and right. On the right side we find the standard connections of the Raspberry Pi 4B, the USB-C power input, two mini HDMI connectors and the analog audio output on 3.5 mm jack. On the rear the USB and network sockets of the Raspberry Pi, two times USB 2, two times USB 3 and the RJ45 network socket. Then the main 5 volt DC input, I'll get back to that, and the analog outputs on RCA. And surprise, on the bottom there is an earth terminal that can be connected to the power supply. As I have mentioned many times, the DAC chip needs an extremely stable power supply. Not only since the output of the DAC is nothing more than the input voltage that is varied in amplitude according to the digital audio data, but also since a clean power line and ground plane are essential for proper clock detection. Having a small board computer on the same power lines as the DAC, as is the case with every Raspberry Pi based DAC and streamer, makes it somewhat more complex since a computer can demand relatively large currents for short periods. So you have to make sure that the power lines to the DAC are very well filtered and stabilized with regulators that are fast and produce very low electrical noise. After opening the Boss 2 player it appears it was clearly not built to easily take apart. No problem since what happens inside is well documented. The Boss 2 circuit board is on the right side. Roughly this part contains the clocks that are situated here and the Cirrus Logic CS43198 DAC chip that is hidden below those wires. Although the chip can handle 384 kHz and DSD256, in the Boss 2 it is limited to 192 kHz and DSD64. The larger part of the board holds the 30 low dropout regulators, many filters and two supercapacitors. The power input on the rear is filtered with common mode chokes. This is the power input you normally use since it filters the incoming DC voltage and sends it through to the Raspberry Pi. 
I reviewed it this way using the Allo Nirvana switch mode power supply that I have included in the ready to use price of 215 euros. I also used the dual power mode where the Raspberry Pi is powered separately. To do that you remove the jumper that is hidden in the heat shrink tubing here. Now both the power inputs on the side and the power input on the rear must be used. To test this mode I use the Allo Shanti dual linear power supply that has a 5.2 volts 3 amps output to power the Raspberry Pi and a 5.2 volts 1.2 amp output for the Boss 2 board. The outputs obviously are galvanically isolated. This power supply adds about 100 euros to the setup price. The Raspberry Pi 4B is mounted close to the bottom of the housing and the Boss 2 board sticks on the GPIO connector. There is not much to say about the hardware. It is predominantly controlled from a smartphone, tablet or computer using an internet browser on which later on more. In standard mode the display on the front shows the volume setting in dBs, the bit depth, the sampling rate and, when appropriate, the mute status. The tiny joystick on the front lets you set volume or make menu settings. You can choose between 1.7 or 2 volts outputs and several filter settings. The default settings it came with were my favourite, which effectively is all four settings engaged, 2 volt output and the F speed on slow. The function on the joystick is doubled on the remote control. It further has a mute button. The play pause button on the remote didn't function. Time to look at the software side of things. For those that are handy with Raspberry Pis, installing and setting up all kinds of audio players is simple. Those with little experience might encounter difficulties, for instance to have the right hardware driver installed or the small program that drives the display. For those a ready to use system is the best solution and that is the setup I describe here. I ordered it with Mood, which is a player that as almost all Raspberry Pi based players is a shell around the Linux music player daemon. This means that you can use any MPD controller on smartphone or tablet to control the boss too. But it also has an HTML interface, meaning that you can start your internet browser and type mood.local to open the user interface. It starts on the browser with sources, playlists and favorites. I have hooked up a USB drive called Sweek that contains music, so let's go there. Let's search the NIT by tapping the T along the right side and tap the NIT. Let's take my favorite album Urk and start the first track. Tapping the lower part of the screen brings us to the playing screen. Here the cover art with below it track specifics are shown. In the middle the track progression clock and the volume setting. Tapping the little TV screen gives you the larger album art. On the left side the playlist that currently only holds a track that is played. You can mark this track as favorite by tapping on the heart icon. Tapping the M in the top right corner opens a menu. Let's go to configure and show you the parametric equalizer, which is simple but workable. In the MPD configuration the output device and many other settings can be changed. If you don't know what you do, leave them as they are. Tapping the information button on the right for the settings does give more information on the settings. All in all it is decent player software. Although hardly graphically pleasing, it works reliable and fast. I was nicely surprised by the sound quality considering the price of course. Using the Nirvana power supply it clearly outperformed the Hi-Fi Berry DAC2 with S booster power supply. Upgrading to the Shanty power supply, powering the Raspberry Pi and Boss DAC separately further improved the sound quality, as it should since it cost about 100 euros more. In both cases the quality was well balanced over all quality parameters. Using the Shanty increased the resolution and stereo image, but the overall tonal balance remained the same. 
I've used it in my setup one for an hour and it never irritated me. Not that the Boss 2 sounded anywhere near the DAC in setup one of course. Using the Shanty power supply it belongs in my setup two somewhere halfway. Using the Nirvana it positioned itself halfway between the Hi-Fi Berry DAC and the Boss 2 with Shanty. We are talking only 215 euros for a streamer here. I must be honest about the looks for it won't be everyone's cup of tea. I liked it but at the same time it makes it hard to believe it sound as good as it does. On the other hand, once operational you can hide it away for it is fully controlled from your smartphone, tablet or computer. And when I look inside I see lots of things I like. For youngsters it's a good way of starting with quality audio. They can start off with an El Cheapo Wallward power supply which brings down the price to about 165 euros and upgrade later to a better power supply. Mood supports Spotify and coming from this device it will sound clearly better than coming from a laptop. Which brings us to the end of this video. But know there will be a new video next Friday at 5 pm Central European time. If you don't want to miss that, subscribe to this channel or follow me on the social media so you will be informed when new videos are out. Help me reach even more people by giving this video a thumbs up or mention it on the social media. It is much appreciated. Many thanks to those viewers that support this channel financially. It keeps me independent and lets me improve the channel further. If that makes you feel like supporting my work too, the links are in the comments below this video on YouTube. I'm Hans Beekhuizen, thank you for watching and see you in the next show or on the HBproject.com. And whatever you do, enjoy the music.